Yo, what's up, Internet peoples? Tim Conley here, and I've got an audience member question. I love doing audience member questions. This one is how to get paid for strategy when no one knows who you are. So let's check it. All right, so all right, better put on my glasses so I can read Adora Drake's question. Adora says, I had a quick question about acquiring clients with your strategy method. My few clients have come through cold outreach and we jump on a Zoom call to show them some of the things I offer via screen share, content marketing, social media, etc. They choose monthly recurring packages. My question is, how can I reach out to someone cold and transition them into a paid consultation diagnosis of their business using your paid to think strategy? Is this something that can only be done after you have built a personal brand? Boom! That's a really good question, Adora. This is something that going out cold, you can't rely on authority, even if you are an authority. Well, okay. If Tony Robbins did a cold outreach directly to me, you know, actually Tony Robbins to me, I would first I'd be like, that ain't Tony. Tony would never do that. But if he did, he would still maintain his authority. I'd be like, wow, I can't believe this dude's reaching out to me. But for us mere mortals, that's not possible. We reach out to somebody cold we immediately destroy any type of authority that we could potentially have. So the personal brand concept doesn't really matter in this case. We don't need a personal brand. What we need to do is establish expertise that we can actually solve somebody's problem. That way, if we get people to see us as experts, we can transition them right into our system for solving their problems. Before I get into the three things you need to do to sell strategy cold, we need to address the whole cold outreach. See, cold outreach is a sales mechanism. It's not marketing. You have to understand this. It is focused on generating awareness. They have no idea who you are, so you introduce yourself. Now they, they know you exist. They don't know, like, and trust you, but they do know you exist. The next part of cold outreach is interest. You have to generate interest quickly, and then you're going right into taking action. That's not exactly the easiest thing to do when someone doesn't know who you are and you're coming at them cold, but it is possible. Direct response marketing has been doing this for ages. Back in the old school days of making a sales letter and mailing it out to a million people cold and generating sales, it's been done for a long, long time. Now that we understand that cold outreach is a sales function instead of a marketing one, we can go into the three things you have to do to establish your expertise. First one, experts have procedures. The second, experts say no. The third one is experts establish their position. You have to institute procedures to be seen as an expert. All experts have a procedure. You go to the doctor, they have a procedure from the time that you call in to schedule an appointment all the way through until even after the appointment's over. There are steps that you have to take and you, as the customer, can't deviate from them. They just don't allow it. And this is something that you have to institute. You've reached out cold to somebody and they've responded. So the first thing you have to do is start pre-framing them before you actually speak to them. So in Adora's case, she says that she gets them on a Zoom call and then just starts describing what she does and then lets the prospect order. So when you're in that position, you're not an expert. You're an order taker. You're a retail clerk. You're somebody who is just saying, here's the products we have to offer, which do you want? Adora needs to establish a new procedure for all prospects. 
instead of the one that turns her into an order taker and set up one that becomes the expertise builder. And it's a matter of pre-framing. I'll link in the description a video I did on how to pre-frame so that you can do a qualifying call with your prospects. It's critical to using that system so that you can be seen as an expert. The basic procedure you have to have to set yourself up as an expert is one, a scheduling system. They cannot talk to you directly. They have to schedule a time. Once they've done that, they need to be presented with materials that show you as an expert. Case studies, testimonials, things that show that you know what you're doing. Then when you are actually on the call, you're asking questions about why they're talking to you, why they have an issue in their business, why, not what would you like me to do for you? What's the problem behind responding to my cold outreach? Because my cold outreach has intrigued you. Now we need to understand, well, what's the underlying problem that the prospect thinks they have? And in my years of experience, most of the time, the thing that they think they have isn't really the issue. So that's why diagnosis is so important. And then this is where in that pre-qualifying call, you get to understand whether or not they're a good fit. And then if they are a good fit, you move them to the next stage in your sales process. If they're not a good fit, that takes us to the next part, which is experts say no. Nearly everyone from freelancer to agency owner, I mean, even larger agencies are scared to say no because they got bills to pay. So they will take on people who should not be clients. And this turns them essentially into an order taker. I'll take on anyone I can, will provide services to you. And then that turns you into a commodity, not an expert that they trust, someone that they listen to for advice, because they're the ones telling you, do this for me and I will pay you. And you just say, yes, I will do that. If you're an expert, you have to say no to someone who is dictating a process. Just like with a doctor, you can't just walk back into the exam room and say, hey doc, this is what's wrong with me, fix it. That isn't going to fly. The doctor's like, nope, we got procedures. You schedule an appointment. You sit in that waiting room for a long time. Then eventually you come back and then I start diagnosing you and you're paying me to diagnose you. This is what experts do. All experts do this. Well, all the ones who get a premium fee, those people say no to a prospect who is trying to dictate terms. They say no to people who are saying, this is my diagnosis, you just fulfill it for me. They also say no to prospects that don't have the right need for the solutions that they can provide. If you're not able to do something for a client, you don't say, well, yes, I will figure it out for you. That's not what an expert is because you're not an expert in it. If you take on any client who is not the best fit, you say yes instead of saying no, you're going to struggle selling strategy. The third one is really a combination of all the activities that you do. Experts establish a position. They say, this is what I do. This is how I solve problems. If you come to me, then I am going to solve your problem for you. They don't say, here's a menu of services. Please, please, please pick one. They don't do that. They say, this is what I do. This is what it'll achieve for you. And that allows the right prospects to self-select. If your prospect comes through your pre-framing and they're like, yeah, this is pretty good. I like it. I like it. I'm interested. And then they get into your pre-qualifying call and they're like, yeah, yeah, I, I want to work with you. And then at the end of that, in your position, they have to understand, yeah, I think, I think you can actually solve my problem. When all those things are true, you will be seen as the expert for them, as somebody that they need to trust. They need to follow your procedures even further. So then when you say in your positioning statement, when you say, I do this for you, 
and then you say, this is the next step. And that next step is strategy. They're going to believe you. And that's the key to doing all of this. A prospect has to believe that you're the expert. If you do all the pre-framing, you say no to all the prospects that you shouldn't work with, that prospect will believe the next steps in your procedures. The reason they believe it is that you've been consistent through all your procedures so far. And when you say that step one in working with you is to buy your thinking, they say, okay, because you've set everything up as a logical next step, because now they understand why strategy is so important to solving their actual problem. You've established yourself so that they know, I need to listen to this person. I need to listen to Adora. I need to listen to you. Adora, thank you for asking this question. Hopefully this has helped you structure, get the big framework necessary for you to do your cold outreach and establish yourself as an expert so that someone will say, yes, I do want to buy your thinking. And for everyone else, thank you for watching. Hopefully this has helped you too. And if you got questions, hit me up in the comments and also like, subscribe, share, and do all the socials. And let's see each other right back here in the next video. That was a lot of work.